Hello, in this video I just want to go over the this basic while loop a little bit more. So I'm going to even, I think, repeat a little bit of what I said in the last video because this is really an important topic. Now, hopefully you've tried out this code. It's, it's really important to do that. And hopefully you've tried the little exercise I gave you to make the loop execute exactly five times instead of 10 times in this case, or make it execute some particular number of times of your choosing. Um, it, it is only with typing it repeatedly that you will gradually become familiar with it. And yes, we'll, we'll be explaining everything that happens here and you'll gradually come to understand all the, all the individual elements of it much better than you currently do. But even so, it's, it's important to type these things out um, to sort of, that will really help you remember them and effectively you've got a sort of recipe here so that if you want a loop that executes a certain number of times you know what to type and then um, you don't even necessarily have to understand it but eventually certainly you will. Um, so as we've seen uh, we've got this while loop and it's going to execute this code block repeatedly or it, it, it might not execute it at all if the while if the loop condition here is never true, this will never get executed. But uh, typically we're going to execute it at least once and probably several times. That's the point of a loop. And after the while loop is finished running your code, your code block, then whatever statements are below, it's going to carry on. Your program will carry on executing those. And we've seen that to actually terminate the loop, we start with a variable declaration and we assign a value to it, typically zero. And then, um, Usually, uh, what we do, or perhaps most often, is we say, run this loop as long as that counter is less than some value. Uh, so if I were to put five here, this would execute, this code block would execute exactly five times. And um, the reason is that, uh, well, it's the counter starts off at zero, and then this would be true for the values uh, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Remember, we're incrementing the counter, increasing the value of it every time we go through the loop. When counter is equal to 5, it would stop. This is a little bit confusing because we're saying while counter is less than 5, and, and yet um, somehow the loop executes exactly 5 times. And the reason is that we start at 0. So uh, we, it executes for the value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 instead of, as you might expect, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, so that's, that's just a little bit confusing, but basically if you want a loop that executes, you know, 63 times, you'd put 63 here. So it's pretty simple. It's really important to type out this, even a few times if you can be bothered. Try to type it from memory or by looking um, at the code as little as possible uh, until you can uh, actually write a loop. Uh, yourself. That's a, that's a good thing to do if you feel like looking at, looking at it, doing it, I should say, because um, uh, as I've mentioned, a lot of learning just occurs with sort of almost like muscle memory. Just by typing it again, you've got a little, little recipe here for how to execute a loop a certain number of times. And I know at this point, if you're new to programming, you're going to probably still feel a bit confused, uh, quite possibly. If you don't, that's great. But it will be normal to still feel confused. We're going to be looking at all the different elements of this loop in more detail and in other contexts, so you'll become familiar with them. But even if you do feel confused, uh, by sort of learning this as a little recipe, then um, you've got something you can use, and then you can improve your understanding of it as time goes by. Okay, uh, so one important element of this is that we must increment, or in other words, increase the counter as we go through the loop. Otherwise it otherwise this will never be this condition will never be false uh, and the loop will go on forever. We have to remember to increment it. Increment just means increase usually by one. And there's also decrement which means decrease by one and we're going to be looking at those. In this case, so we've got this expression which as I've noted previously um, can confuse beginners because it looks a bit like 
a mathematical equation expressing equality. It looks like it's saying counter is equal to itself plus one. That's not what it means at all. It's really important to realize that in uh, Java and a number of other programming languages, a single equal sign doesn't express equality. It expresses assignment. It's the assignment operator. And with the assignment operator, it's, it's typically best to look at the right-hand side first and work out what that is going to amount to. And then uh, that's going to get assigned to whatever variable is on the left-hand side. So in this case, we take the variable of counter, whatever it happens to be at that moment, we add one to it, and then we assign it or we store that value in this variable on the left-hand side, which also happens to be counter, but that doesn't cause any problems. So it's like we're taking the value of counter, adding one to it, uh, um, and but that doesn't actually change counter. This bit doesn't change counter. You're just, you're just using the value of counter and adding one to that, and that's kind of stored in the computer's memory temporarily. It's, it's this assignment that actually takes that new value, counter plus one, and then stores it back in counter. If you are still confused, don't worry, that's normal. Uh, your confusion will gradually clear up. I One thing I noticed was that there's a, um, with Eclipse, uh, I've been using um, working sets, which um, I, don't, I don't use that much, to be honest, but I thought it would make things less confusing here. When I create a new project, uh, it doesn't it doesn't seem to automatically add it to the working set. I think that's a little Eclipse bug. Maybe it won't happen in your version. You know, because when I go to New Java Project, there's an option there to add project to working sets, and the one that I'm using is selected by default. But even so, I'm finding that my project ends up invisible. Uh, to see it, I can click this little down arrow, go to Window Working Sets, and I see all projects. Uh, and uh, if I don't do that, if I just stay on the working set I'm in, what, I f what I'm finding I have to do is click the down arrow, go to, um, uh, let's see, yeah, go to Edit Active Working Set, and then I can see the project I've created, and I can add it to my existing working set, the one I'm using at the moment, the active one. Uh, so you, you hopefully won't have that Eclipse bug, but if you do, if, you, if you're creating projects and they don't appear, click the down arrow and go to Edit Working Set and just add it with the Add button here. Okay, we'll leave it there for this video, and what we're going to do in the next video is look at various ways of incrementing variables because it's such an important topic. We're going to be using it over and over again, and um, gradually I'm going to introduce you to things like operator precedence, but sort of bit by bit. This is a complicated topic. And pretty soon we're going to get on to looking at other fundamental building blocks of computer programs like the if construct and uh, other types of loop, this sort of thing. Okay, so until next time, happy coding.